here we are back with our rug, our experimental rug, and I was able to get a couple of spacers in here that I think will hold everything pretty stable. So um, we're going to go ahead and start in with our colors and the uh, green is going to show up in the middle and then the red, the dark red, will show up on the outside and on the reverse it will be reversed. So go ahead and put the first pick in and I'm using some old rug shuttles that I have and they are pretty narrow or pretty wide for this particular loom so we'll go ahead and see how how well they do ah, reach my this back and twist the plies and I think making sure we twist the plies back together is important on this to see how this turns out. It's probably not as good as if I would actually planned it, but it's fun to experiment. I have switched my colors so I probably got my shuttles mixed up or my treadling mixed up so we'll have to go back are easier to wind back on when you have to unweave. Oh yeah, that's
I did get my shovels mixed up. And four is the red. There we go. Back in business. about 
15 inches of loom waist. This loom has such a little amount of waist on the work. So if I am doing 15 inches um, and I've got six, um, let's see, I've got six colors, right? One, two, three, four, five. No, I've got two, four, yeah. That is more than that. Let's see, I've got Seven colors. Oh, so we can do seven colors. Um, so let's say three and a quarter inches, actually 27 minus two inches, 25 inches. I'm going to do three inches in each section. Okay. Perfect. So, based on what my loom waist is, how much um, warp I have left on my loom, and the number of colors of warp that I have, I am going to try to get three inches out of each color. Um, the dark red is the smallest amount that I have, so um, if I can get three inches out of this, then that will be great. If not, then I will just leave everything with the same amount of that this red provides. Perfect. We're doing this a little bit on the fly, but that's okay. It's just an experiment, and I think it's working. forward because I've got to really bang this in. So I'm going to push it back a little bit again.
looking awesome. So I will wind the next uh, set of shuttles and we will do the next colors. here uh, using the uh, sped up video but I thought I would um, clarify this is a, a ski shuttle that I'm using and you're seeing me pass it through the warp on its side like this which is technically not correct um, it should travel through the warp or the shed this way However, it's fairly tall and my shed is fairly small. So it has a hard time going through and the chance of it picking up a warp thread on this bottom because the bottom is not 
turn up like a lot of ski shuttles are. Um, so the chance of it catching on a warp thread are greater. So I find it easier to just turn it on its side like this and um, then I don't have to worry about it catching warp threads. So I thought I would just explain that, that yes, I do know how a ski shuttle is supposed to go through the shed. It's just that my particular loom, the shed, is fairly narrow and so I have to adapt. Um, this is a rag shuttle and I've used it as a rug shuttle. Uh, and this one actually goes through quite well. I kind of overloaded it um, so the yarn is dragging and it's not going through the shed quite as easily. Um, I get a few more picks uh, wound off it and it will it'll slide through there really easily. Once I get a few more picks off of this one too, it will slide through a lot easier than it has been. But when I started out, I wanted to load enough on there to get the whole three inches, so it was a bit overloaded. So now we'll just go back to the sped up version.
Okay, we are at the end of our rug. I finished it off with uh, the black stripe to match the stripe at the other end and uh, put in just a little bit of the 8-4 cotton to um, hold everything in place. And now I am going to uh, cut it off of the loom. It's very exciting. I always like this part. Let's get a decent pair of scissors. <clears throat> And I'll back the tension off. Um, I want to get as much warp as possible to give me enough to work with easily. I think maybe I will do a full Damascus if I have enough warp on the other end. I'm not sure that I do, but we'll see. So there is the experimental rug. I think that turned out really cool. And then on the back, it should be reversed. And there we have it. And then the rug, I put the pattern on, or the work on for, is there's the front. There's the back. So we'll go ahead and um, take this off and do some uh, trimming of the tails and do the hemming. Um, and I may uh, go ahead and give it a bath so that uh, it can kind of shrink in a little bit not sure if I will do that or not. Um, probably on the experiment rug, I will. And that will help uh, maybe hide some of the work or the weft that is peeking through on the opposite sides. So anyway, here is the final results of the experiment Takate rug. It turned out pretty good. It measures 24 and a half inches long by 23 inches wide. And as with the other rug, it is reversible. Thanks for following along as I experimented with this technique and this rug to create something that I hadn't expected. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to my channel to see future videos. Thanks and have happy weaving.